Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Got a letter in the mail from a brother and sister in Christ, and I'd like to read it. So, and then we're going to talk about some things. There's some prayer requests, and there's, uh, I want to talk about gospel tracks. So, let's start. Uh, Hi, brother Philip. I hope this finds you well. Uh, the husband's name and I, my husband and I, I said it like this, have been praying for you. We are in chaotic times for sure. Thank you for your prayers very much. Thank you for your prayers. I'm being attacked. Every little thing, like I'm copying, like read letters is copying somebody. It's like one person has the trademark on reading letters and I got attacked for it. Um, but yes, thank you for your prayers and all the brethren's prayers out there for this ministry. My husband was laid off for two months. I mean, I'm going to stop right there. Uh, I've heard prayer requests from brethren that uh, they're losing their jobs because of the mass thing. Uh, they're losing jobs because uh, the downsizing, business is being closed for too long and everything. And for whatever reason, uh, that has been a major prayer request for the brethren is the jobs. You know, people are losing their jobs and they need to find jobs. I've, you know, just keep praying for the brethren for that. We got so much done on our property and even got most of the inside of our house painted. The Lord blessed them, you know. It looks like you are building a beautiful homestead for yourself. Also praise God for blessing the work of our hands. Amen. And remember, you can take joy and the fruits of your labor. He really has blessed us more than we could, could have imagined. We are so thankful. The weather here has been perfect for gardening and working outside. We have temperatures in the 70s during the day and high 40s and 50s at night. We planted a huge garden and have seven chickens. This was uh, written 6 17 20. <laughs> so last month by the time it got to me. We planted a huge garden and have seven chickens, six hens, and a rooster. Woohoo! <laughs> Those are always great. If you've got some of your own property and you got some land, chickens are so easy to get and take care of. And you get all the eggs you want. You can sell some at the farmer's market. Uh, you can keep them if you have a family, husband, wife, children, that feed your family. There's nothing better than being in the sunshine listening to the Bible playing. It's very peaceful. The walk and talk, the 617 walk and talk. We just watched your video. It felt like you were talking directly to us. It's been very difficult to find joy in such a chaotic world. Even maintaining peace is a struggle lately, but we're trying to stay focused. My husband really had the bigger struggle as he, bigger, bigger struggle, there's a period, he has to work out in the world and with all the new restrictions from the virus, it's taken a toll on his joy and peace. A lot of people have been saying that, brethren have been saying that they're losing their joy and their peace because of the world. We continue to pray about his work situation and his health. We were just talking about when stories, stores open back up, we're going tracting. And they sent me these couple tracks we'll talk about in a second. We used to do that and then we just started leaving them at the stores and businesses when we shopped or had an appointment. We are encouraged and it's comforting that we're not the only ones feeling the effects of this world and just how sinful our flesh is the stress of the world, and the struggles with the lost world, and the struggles with the flesh. I'm going to stop there for a second. Um, I did a study about um, the Lord is King, part two, making war. Uh, for us, as, I'm working on a study right now for soldiers. Um, the war that we're fighting right now is two wars. We're fighting, we're fighting a war against the flesh, and we're fighting a war against the lost world, the ways of the world. You know, spiritual warfare, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against 
powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The ways of the world are always going to be contrary to the word of God. Always. Okay? So that's the two things that we're always going to be fighting. The world is one thing that's really going to get you down. Your flesh is one thing that's really going to get you down. And what's frustrating right now, brethren, is when we're fighting amongst ourselves. We're not supposed to be fighting amongst ourselves. We're supposed to be of one mind. Okay? I know I might step on some toes, but nowhere in this Bible does it say you can agree to disagree on anything as the body of Christ. Nowhere. We're supposed to be of one mind. We're not supposed to be fighting each other. False converts, absolutely, get out of here. You're false. You came, you know, all these red flags, it's come to light. God will bring it to light. You're false, get out. Take your teachings with you, false teachings with you, you know. When people are calling out false converts, false teachers, and stuff like that, absolutely. But as the body of Christ, we're not supposed to be fighting each other. The two wars that we're fighting is against the flesh and against this lost world, you know, spiritually speaking, which we'll get to. How we fight. <laughs> All right. We fall into negative thinking, and that never goes anywhere good. We are truly blessed by your encouragement. Sometimes we just need that to really examine ourselves. Philippians 4.8. Love Philippians 4.8. Puts in here. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Absolutely praise the Lord. I'm going to try to do that song that uh, the Simmel String Band does and put it to a video with the ocean background and everything about, you know, what's everything's are. What is it? Um, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just. And it's a great song. Let's see. Uh, and what lifts up my Lord. It's like I said, I'm trying to remember the song, but uh, sometimes when I try to remember stuff on the spot, it's not always easy for me. Um, think on these things, if there be any virtue, if they glorify God, and lift up my Lord. And they go off, they go over that verse. Think on these things, for they will not hurt you. And, and through it all, you'll be closer to God. And that's what I've always preached. If your walk, want your walk with God to be strong, think on those things. Make sure it's 100% about Jesus Christ. Get that sin out of your life. Don't let the lost world get you down. Don't let your flesh get you down. Hide God's word in your heart. It says here, We will continue to pray for you. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. And our love for you in Christ Jesus. And then the brother and sister in Christ. P.S. We enclosed a few tracks until you have a chance to make your own. And I've been sitting on this letter for a week. So it's not that it came in that late. I apologize for sitting on it for so long. But she sent me some gospel tracts. Okay. Now, uh, it's, it's amazing timing that she did what she did. Um, because I got with the brother in Christ, and I'll be showing you in a second. And we made, he helped me make a gospel tract. And he sent me some gospel tracts. And we were talking, and we felt like the Lord was putting it on our hearts. That uh, something we can do for the body of Christ, but mainly for the Lord, is we can print out gospel tracts these gospel tracts, and um, I'll be responsible for mailing the gospel tracts among the U.S. Uh, this brother's in Canada, and he'll be responsible for mailing um, gospel tracts to people who want them in Canada and start getting some good gospel tracts that line up with Scripture. I used to get my gospel tracts from uh, Chick Publications, and then they start going to easy believism. They start putting in images, uh, images of the Godhead, Jesus Christ. He is the image of the Godhead. If you were allowed to make an image of the Godhead, it would be Jesus Christ. It's not a dove. It's not that satanic symbol that you break it down, it makes 666. Okay? It's Jesus Christ. You're not allowed to make images of Jesus Christ. Yet he does it left and right. Angels with wings. 
He tries, he tries to actually draw uh, images of the Godhead where he does the bird. God the Father is a ghostly figure and, and Jesus Christ. And he tries to draw the, the Godhead and, um, and his chick tracks and everything. And, his, and they just become wicked. And I can't support uh, using chick tracks anymore. And then you have places like the Fellowship Track Leave. I got some through them that were okay and everything. But I point out with this one right here that this brother and sister sent me. Um, there's no repentance in it whatsoever. It talks about the sinner that goes to the sentence, and then it talks about the Savior, you know, the fact that you're a sinner, and then it talks about the cost of sin, which is great, but then it completely skips repentance and goes straight to the Savior. You just believe in the Savior, you know, just believe in Jesus Christ. Only believe, only believe. There's no repentance. There's no godly sorrow in your heart for sinning against Him. Come to Him broken. It's not here. Now, I know you're not doing this purposely, brother, sister, Christ. It's we're getting desperate because everybody that's supposed to be printing gospel tracts based off the gospel of the King James Bible, they're going the way of the world. They're taking out repentance. Okay? This one takes out prayer. Okay? Now, I understand you don't, it, you don't say pray this specific prayer. It's called talking to God. We use the word pray because the Bible says when you talk to the Lord... That's called prayer. Okay? That's why we use the word prayer. You're supposed to talk to God, confess both in prayer, okay, and ask God to save you. So this one has no repentance in it, and it doesn't tell the person to, to even pray. Actually, it does. I'm sorry. I take it back. It says the scope, but does say it preach. It, it um, says the two verses, um, Romans 10, 9 through 10, where it says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth, and then for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I was wrong on that. I'm sorry. Might have been another one, because some of them are taking out prayer. But this one doesn't have repentance in it. This isn't going to get anybody saved. I'm sorry. It's just not. If this doesn't tell them about how they're supposed to have godly sorrow, for sinning against them. That's what makes true biblical repentance as it applies to salvation work. You have to have sorrow in your heart for your personal sins against Him. Not just being a sinner. We're all sinners. So this one, thank you for the for the thought because it's pushing me to, I think we need to get to work and start making some of our own gospel tracks when I start going through here. Then there was this one, you know, God's last name. And it says it's not the D-A-M-E, you know, like you build a dam. Um, and you go through here, and I'm reading through here. And this one, from my understanding, it's because it's been a while, I've been going through a lot of tracks. But this one, I think, also kind of downplays repentance. But it says, God loves you so much. Present tense. Uh, God does not, present tense, loss a Christ rejecting sinner. He loved past tense. So this one's preaching present tense love. But the thing that got to me is when you got to the very back. If you desire to be saved, please pray this prayer or a similar or similar to it. I'm all for that. Here's an idea of a prayer if it's, you know, kind of, or similar to it. But here's the thing. It says, dear God, I admit I am a sinner going to hell. Is that what the Bible says repentance is? No. There are lost people that will mock God, saying, yeah, I know I'm a sinner and I'm going to hell. I don't care. I'm going to have the best time I can until I get there. They said it. True biblical repentance, once again, godly sorrow. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. The number one reason why people won't get saved is they have worldly sorrow. And there's a lot of people coming to light right now. What it is, that they have worldly sorrow. They don't have godly sorrow. Okay. Thank you for this, brothers and sisters in Christ. I understand the whole point. We need to get out there. Um, if you turn in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians, we'll start at uh, 6, chapter 6, verse 17. Okay. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 
That's because you truly repented. When this isn't there, that's because you didn't repent. Verse 18, And all things are of God who hath reconciled to us, reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. See, God does a present tense love of Christ, Christ rejecting sinner. He's out here in the world, and he's using us to reconcile the world to him. And hath committed us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. I'm going to go off on a little side note here real quick. If you're living, looking like the world and acting like the world, it's going to kill your testimony. And let's say these gospel tracts were 100% on with the Bible. It's not going to do any good you handing out gospel tracts if your life is a complete mess and you're justifying it. You look like the world, act like the world, laugh at the world's jokes. You're supposed to, people are going to look at you and go, you're supposed to, that's what it means to be a Christian? What's the big deal? You know what I'm saying? You can lose your testimony. That's like a whole other study, but you got to be careful not to lose your testimony. I've lost testimony with people. I've lost testimonies with neighbors. I've lost testimonies throughout my, when I was newly saved, okay, with people. So thank you for the letter and the encouragement. So prayer. There are brethren out there that need prayer because of this everything that's going on out there with the masks and everything and the regulations. And some of them are losing their jobs, brothers and sisters in Christ. They need prayer. But that being said, we also need prayer for encouragement. To, uh, Brother in Christ, I got online. Um, I have, I'm blessed that the Lord has picked me back up. And I do a Bible study with some of the brethren once a week. And one of the brethren, uh, he, his calling, he doesn't feel like he's called to make videos too much. He's talking about it. But his biggest calling is he prints out tons of gospel tracts, and he goes out and he hands them out every week. He goes above and beyond, if you want to say it. I hand out gospel tracts when I had them, and I'd hand them out when I'd go into town. So I'd go into town twice a week, I'd lay them everywhere I go, and I'm doing my part because we're all called into the ministry of reconciliation but some people feel called to do more and there's nothing wrong with that and don't feel bad if you're just the one that's just going and laying them when you go but he feels really called he wants to do something for the Lord and he goes out and he has out tons of gospel tracts that's his main purpose he'll purposely leave and go into town just to do gospel tracting hardcore so he made me some gospel tracts we uh, did it online, and then he printed them out on good cardstock, like really good, thick paper. And uh, he, he went crazy. He gave me tons. <laughs> there's, there's tons here. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm going to start getting as many of these out as I can every time I go into town. And like I said, he'll be mailing them because he's got the printer. He's got the setup. He does really good. This is just a little early thing. I'll be doing another video eventually. We're going to have a spot where you can print them out yourself if you want to print your own to have the template. If you want to change a little bit here and there because the wordings can be a little bit different when you're using your own words um, in between the verses to kind of explain the verses. So I'll show pictures of this uh, up on the screen as we're doing this. Um, but basically in the front it says, time is running out, are you ready? And it says, for the wages of sin is death. It shows an image of hell, a lot of hands coming up, and it says hell. And below it says, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. When they open it up, they see the next pages. Oops, I'm sorry. Oh, I'll still leave these out. These weren't done right. Um... No, maybe it was. They're supposed to open it up like this. Okay. But anyway, we're, it's a work in progress. But the next page you're supposed to see, it says, Heaven, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. But I go through here and I make sure to emphasize repentance, that you're a sinner. Repentance is sorrow of the heart, not the sorrows of the world, but the sorrows of the heart. Okay, the belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ, who Jesus is, he's God manifest in the flesh. 
Okay? Confess both in prayer and ask God to save you in your own words. You know, confess both of those in prayer to God and ask Him to save you. And then on the back, uh, Holy Bible, King James Bible, um, we say get a, get a King James Bible today and follow along on YouTube and we put down some YouTube ministries. And that stuff can be changed, you know, the format if you want to uh, promote this King James Video Ministries or that King James Video Ministries. Uh, anybody that's based off King James is what I mean. Um, so, this will be a good work in progress. Um, so, the whole point is we're going to get some gospel tracts. We're going to try to make gospel tracts available to brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, we're, that's, that's the big push right now. We're trying to plant seeds. We're trying to hold people accountable. And we're trying to get that last soul saved. So thank you for your letter. I love getting letters in the mail um, in the P.O. box. And I sat out on the deck um, and read them. And I talked with the Lord about it. So it was, a, it was a blessing to get that letter. Thank you, brother and sister in Christ. And the encouragement. Working with your hands is great. When you work on your property and you start doing things that glorify God, that peace will come and that joy will come. When you start becoming stagnant and you start falling into the flesh, uh, the joy is not there and the peace isn't there. And if anybody tells you otherwise, they're liars and deceivers. Okay? That you can have your video games, movies, TV shows, um, alcohol, cigarettes, weed, whatever, fornication, I'm just going through all the things. Uh, on the, it's, you can't have peace and joy justifying those things and allowing those things in your lives. Okay, I can testify. So many brothers and sisters in Christ can testify. You know, when things get hard and the stress of the world is the ones that just zap the joy and peace from you. But God will give you that joy and peace that nobody can take away. Not this lost world, not your flesh, Okay. And it's through Jesus Christ. Okay. So, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.